लिमिटेड के एम एस हेल्थ सेंटर एंड चेन्नई सर वी हार्ट फुली वेलकम यू सर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक यू फॉर एक्सेप्टिंग अवर इन्विटेशन श्री पदमावती स्कूल ऑफ फार्मेसी वेलकम्स यू फॉर द नेशनल वेबिनार सर प्लीज वेलकम सर and uh, before starting uh, today's webinar let me take an opportunity to introduce the dignitaries for today's program sir so the chief patron of uh, today's webinar is shrimati p sulochana madam madam is uh, chairperson of shripadmavati educational institutions and uh, patron for today's program is shri p pranit sir sir is the director of shripadmavati educational institutions and convener for today's program Uh, professor dr d ranganayakulu sir principal of shripadmavati school of pharmacy and president of indian pharmaceutical association tirupati local branch sir. and organizing secretary for today's webinar is dr v shanmugam sir head of the department uh, pharmaceutics division shripadmavati school of pharmacy i welcome you all for national webinar series four sir please welcome so traditionally uh, before starting uh, today's webinar let us start uh, with a traditional invocation song I request D Jamal sir to play please play the invocation Swati namastubhyam varadi kamarupini vidyarambham karishyami sidhir bhavatu me Thank you, sir. Uh, now I request convener for today's webinar, uh, Principal of Sri Padmavati School of Pharmacy, Dr. D. Ranganai Kulasar, to please deliver a welcome note and address the session. Thank you, Sir Nivas. I respect our uh, Chief Patent, Madam Sulochni Gar, Patent Director P. Pradeepshar, Organizing Secretary Dr. Sharmagam. and coordinator uh, sinwas murthy dr kishor prakash uh, and all the department of farm sticks and uh, mr jamal and all uh, delegates and participants in the program the most important uh, today resource person is dr kumar uh, sanmagam sir vice president of uh, uh, nhs health centers <laughs> Uh, entire uh, India, nationwide and the global wise, the place and importance of the general class has to. Uh, not place by the way on the general products. Uh, this being expected, you know, uh, in depth of the technical knowledge of this development of the general products, we are to achieve. Uh, Good afternoon, Jason. Thank you. We need to use the mic. Yes, sir. You can speak now, sir. 
The deliberation definitely is going to enrich their minds of you know, innovative works in the research for interfarms in this technology. Uh, of course, we are doing this kind of job uh, uh, more than four series of the pharmaceutical sciences from the technology. Uh, I feel definitely the deliberation of uh, uh, Kumar Swami uh, it uh, cleared the young mind sets toward the formulation of gender drugs. So this plays a very wide role and definitely I hope we are going to be carry out the weightage of hub and knowledge of hub toward the industry oriented technology, especially for the gender drugs. With this, I remain. I, I uh, hand out the mic and pass out the mic to the organizers. Thank you very much, Shamagam. Please carry on. Thank you very much, sir, for your welcome address and highlighting uh, the importance of today's topics. Before uh, starting the main session, scientific session, uh, let us take an opportunity to invite. Uh, uh, today's speaker Kumar Shanmugam sir with a brief citation. Now I request Srimadhi P. Lakshmi madam to brief out the citation of uh, today's honorable speaker, Dr. Mr. Kumar Shanmugam sir. Shanmukam sir was studied B pharmacy in Adipara Shakti College of Pharmacy, Mail Marvatur, Tamil Nadu, in from nineteen ninety-four to nineteen ninety-eight. Sir was studied M pharmacy in Birla Institute of Technology, Mesra, Ranchi in from nineteen ninety-nine to two thousand one. Sir was worked in various uh, aspects, worked as research associate, Torrent Research Center, Ahmedabad from two thousand one to two thousand three. Sir also worked as senior research scientist, ran vaccine research laboratories. In time period of 2003 to 2007, and also worked as manager in Dr. Reddy's laboratories from 2007 to 2009. And sir was also worked as assistant general manager, Orchid Healthcare from 2009 to 2015. Sir was worked as director for Par Pharmaceuticals Chennai from 2015 to 2018. Sir currently working as head for head for formulations and analytical de development, KMS Healthcare. Uh, I heartily welcome you, sir, for today's seminar. Thank you. Thank you uh, for all the welcome notes and the introduction by the team. Uh, I'd also thank the management of uh, Sri Padmavati College for arranging this webinar series uh, for an eye opener for the young minds of the college and uh, the open students from all the pharmacy fraternity across the India and globe. Uh, today's topic I plan to discuss about generic product drug development. Uh, this is an, a hot topic for the past 20 years. It's a very broad and uh, uh, wide topic. I chose this because there would be a lot of discussions and uh, eye openers for this particular title. Uh, going into the depth of the science probably would have limitation to only a few students or few people. That's why I took a broader session of uh, taking this uh, title to discuss in this webinar series. So uh, I would take up the agenda as below, uh, taking the introduction. Uh, advantages of generic drugs, uh, history of how the generics came into picture, the facts about generics, uh, the approval process or the filing and approval process, and the recent developments in the field of generic formulations. So these are the uh, key areas against which we are going to discuss. I believe the uh, discussion can go up to 40-45 minutes and I'll leave something to the end of the seminar for the faculty to discuss about. Uh, uh, as described uh, myself, uh, I'll tell you a brief background of myself. I had a postgraduate in pharmacy and uh, I'm currently working for a company called KMS Health Center in Chennai, which is a core pharmaceutical development company. Uh, and we do generic product development, 
for the uh, US market as well as for the India market. Uh, this is not restricted to only India. Uh, it, globally, we develop products for various clients, uh, which is a science-based approach uh, we develop at our facility. We have a faculty of around 40 members of uh, scientists and analysts together. Uh, we put together science-based approaches for making formulations and uh, uh, catering the client's requirement. Uh, with that said, I would just uh, take a few notes about advantages of generic drugs. Probably people who are listening are aware about generic drugs. Uh, in, in actual, if I say uh, the brand and the non-branded are uh, those two. The non-branded products are generic drugs, which are generally given uh, as the chemical name of the product uh, with the strength and the pharmacopoeial type. <coughs> The cro to, to differentiate, you see, commonly see crocin tablets, which are branded, and paracetamol tablets, uh, IP 500 milligram is a generic product, to be, to be a layman's language. Uh, if you see the overall uh, market, uh, the target is on the US, so if you see the overall US market, the 11 percentage of the prescription, uh, rough about 500 million prescriptions, uh, are done on the brand, which are almost uh, 74 percentage of the cost. It's like 300 and rough about 334 billion US dollars are prescribed only from 11 percentage of the entire prescriptions in a year. Whereas if you consider the generics, there are 89 percentage of prescriptions given uh, across the globe, means across the US which contribute around 3.9 billion prescriptions. It's something unimaginable number of prescription, where the cost is just only 26 percentage of the cost, which accounts to 116 billion US dollars. This is a significant impact of the cost of the drugs. Uh, if you understand why generic drugs are very cheaper, uh, we will discuss about that. And if you see the number of prescription, almost like uh, 8 in 10 prescriptions are in the US are generic drugs, only 2 percentage of the prescriptions are uh, given as branded products, owing to the high cost uh, and owing to the uh, availability of generic products, the generics are preferred more compared to the brand product. And uh, if you see the cost, like almost like 80 to 85 percent of the cost is lesser uh, in the generic drugs compared to the branded products. Uh, the reason the generic products are less is because most of the uh, innovative research, preclinical data are generated by the brand product and the abbreviated new drug applications does not do that. They do only the clinical study to make the bioequivalents uh, and then do the CMC section which talks about the stability and the scalability of the formulation and the administrative section. These are limited or abbreviated uh, applications uh, does cost less. So that's why the cost of the drug product is lesser. Whereas in the brand product, uh, the cost of the goods are very high because they put a lot of money to discover the molecule, make the registration batches, clinical studies. So that's why the prescription products are all having, uh, prescription of which are branded products are having very high cost. In order to retain the market uh, for a longer time to have monopoly, uh, the US uh, market and European markets have a patent protection, but the brand products uh, have a patent exclusivity for 20 years period. Till then, nobody enter, can enter the market with the same product or the same dosage form. So uh, brand products reap the money which they invested for the uh, developing the new molecule and the dosage form by protecting their product or not allowing others to enter for a period of 20 years. These informations are easily available in the Orange Book website, which anybody can go and uh, Google down the Orange Book. You get a lot of information on the uh, how many products are generics available and how many brand products are available for the same molecule and dosage form. In case uh, we, we talk about Indian US market, but if you consider the Indian market also, the cost of the goods are higher in the brand 
compared to the generic product. Though we have branding of uh, products, we don't have patent protection much in India. Uh, if you see uh, the Indian market, there is a Jan Aushadi uh, scheme is presented by the government of India, where the prices of the drugs are given at very, very cheaper rate. Uh, there is a drug price control order where government regulates the price of the drug product. If you see a comparison, Atorvastat in tablets, uh, which are present in uh, tin tablets, cost just four rupees, uh, four to five rupees in the Jan Aushadi pharmacy, whereas the brand products ranges from a minimum of 12 rupees to uh, almost 120 rupees. Uh, it is uh, like a significant change, like it is almost 150 to uh, 2000 percentage of the cost is uh, incurred in the brand product, whereas the ac actual cost of the goods are very less. Branding uh, of the product is uh, made and uh, because of the incur higher cost, the prices of the brand products are very higher. Another comparison I would say is uh, ciproxamaxitil tablets, which uh, at 250 milligram tablets of 10 count cost 66 rupees, whereas the brand product costs around as high as uh, 500 rupees. So yeah, because of the branding, uh, the products are bit much costlier. In, uh, considering a population like India, where we need to have affordable medicines, there are a lot of uh, research and uh, government programs are running to make medicine affordable to a normal or a, a general public. So this these type of things were uh, taken up in the US uh, very historically and that's how the abbreviated new drug application scheme. If you see the history of the uh, ANDA, in 1938 itself there was a, a proof of safety which was going on uh, for a long time because of the safety program FDA has included uh, some of the aspects of drug regulations in 1938. Uh, later in 1962, Kefir Harris uh, amendment came, which has a lot of regulation, and that's how the current FDA regulations came in picture. And in 1966, these uh, amendments were included in the Federal Register, which is like a congregation of uh, US standards for any type of uh, regulation. Yeah, later, uh, they came a drug efficiency study implementation, uh, in the 70s and that came, that paved the way for making the ANDA. So ANDAs were started somewhere in the 70s and uh, later came the Hatch-Waxman Amendment, which basically protects the generic pro uh, brand products for 20 years and also allows the uh, generic product to enter after the patent is expired. Once the patent is expired, the generic products can file their applications to uh, market the product in the USA. So that's how the Wax Hatchman Commandment came. And in 2014, uh, there is a Generic Drug User Fee Act has been enacted. Uh, till 2014, there was no fees for the ANDA or no fees for any uh, subsequent uh, amendment to the application. But later, uh, uh, FDA came back saying that because of the review and the standards, FDA has included a fees for doing the uh, generic drug product development. Uh, that's what the generic drug user fee act came into place. And after the, uh, during this period itself, there was a, a PADUFA was included, which is a prescription drug user fee act, basically for the branded products. This is how the history of AMDA got evolved. And uh, if you see about the facts of AMDA, generally the concept is that the cheaper products are not good quality. The, that's the misnomer basically. Brand products and uh, generic products go hand in hand in terms of the dosage, safety, strength, quality, it's all one and the same. There is no uh, difference between a brand product and uh, the prescription product, means uh, generic product. And uh, if you see in terms of the safety, is the brand and the drugs uh, branded and the generic product, both are equally safe as uh, FDA regulates the safety and the efficacy of the drug product. It is thoroughly reviewed before it gets approval. So generic products are safe when approved. And even after the approval, 
FDA continuously monitors the drug product and the APA manufacturers uh, throughout the world, uh, including US and the other countries, through uh, inspections. And uh, the inspections are triggered based on various aspects. So the drug product qualities are ensured for the US citizen by periodic monitoring. So uh, if you see the factories, what is being manufactured, it's come from the scrutiny. So that's also uh, the standards are not lower than any other products. And if the and if, if with respect to shape, size, and uh, the uh, appearance of the drug product between the brand and the generic, there could be light differences. But efficacy-wise, both are one and the same. And there are guidelines to regulate uh, the patient's swallowability uh, and the shape and size. But uh, by and large, it is not mandated to have a same size, shape and size. But with respect to the patient compliance, it should have the same uh, equivalency. So uh, these type of informations are abundantly available in the uh, FDA uh, site as well as in the EMA sites about the drug product uh, information. So a person who wish to do a drug product development or uh, understands about a generic product or how many generics are available, all these informations are available in the public domain. Uh, anyone can uh, look into that and see how much uh, the drug products are available at uh, for a specific drug product. So coming to the development, how generally the uh, drug product developments are done? I would emphasize some more uh, detailed information about uh, overview of the drug development program. Uh, generally, when a product is being identified uh, for a development, we first look at the uh, RLD, which is generally called the reference listed drug. And the reference listed drugs is being bought from US and uh, it is thoroughly characterized. One, It is basically what we do is a copycat version. So we need to understand what we are going to do and understand the RLD's uh, physicochemical characteristics uh, right from the, uh, from the monitoring of the shape, size, uh, color, thickness, all those things are measured. And after that, some sort of uh, reverse engineering is done to understand the criticality of formulation. And in addition to that, we also perform the assay dissolution uh, and the related substance characterization and aged sample analysis of that to understand the impurity profiling. These sort of analysis are done for solid orals. And according to the dosage form, some critical tests are done for the respective dosage form. And then we look for the uh, IP review. IP is nothing but the intellectual property. Is there any patents pertaining to the drug product development? Or in terms of uh, exclusivity, the drug product uh, AP patent expiries are there. This is also found in the uh, orange book. We can very well look at it. Uh, I've given the link in the last uh, slides and uh, probably people can understand and uh, Google that. Once the IP review is done, we need to devise a strategy, which is called paper strategy. When we do initially, we don't just start the experiment like that. We review and understand the RLD thoroughly, the IP scenario. And after that, we find, uh, make a paper strategy like how do we move about the formulation? We write the composition, we write a process, and uh, understand if this uh, process is going to work out, what are the pros and cons, and also look at the uh, tool drawings and uh, how we make the formulation in terms of excipients, in terms of the APA sourcing, all those things are done. Then the uh, paper strategy is reviewed by the cross-functional team. Uh, generally, cross-functional team uh, includes a big team of Formulation scientists, analytical scientists, drug regulatory department, IP uh, department, the engineering, production, uh, all these department comes in with in the purchase department to source and uh, identify the excipients. So they sit across and uh, have their responsibilities spread across and then start looking for the source and uh, material details. Once the pre-formulation is uh, done, then we go for the prototype where we finalize the source of APA, the excipients, and then start doing the drug excipient compatibility study. Once the compatibility studies are done, we, we mix a drug and uh, excipient in a specific ratio, put it on 
some accelerated stability uh, and uh, some stress conditions and characterized for the impurities and uh, the uh, assay of the drug. Uh, in case if there are something which is objectionable, we knock up that. Uh, there are a lot of designs for doing that, like at Berman designs and simply N minus one excipients. And based on this particularly, we narrow down the excipient which are uh, shall be used for the drug product development. And once the excipients are finalized, then we go for a big scale uh, lab trials. Uh, and uh, the trials will be made in a few uh, hundred to few thousands of tablets and understand whether this formulation is feasible, uh, desired uh, physical chemical characteristics are observed, uh, conduct the dissolution, uh, conduct the assay, and uh, perhaps if there is no monograph for this product, and then we develop a nose method for testing all these programs. Once the prototype or benchside is done, then we check the RLD uh, once the method is available and compare the dissolution between the RLD which we initially bought and the test batch. If these two batches are comparable with each other, then we uh, stop the bench scale and move to the next stage. Or if it is not matching, then we alter the composition or the uh, manufacturing process so that we get the desired dissolution. Dissolution basically for solid orals, uh, the mathematical model says that uh, there is a, a formula which F1, F2 is calculated. This is a difference factor and the similarity factor. Difference factor should be somewhere between uh, 1 to 15 and the uh, dissimilarity factor should be 50 to 100. If these two numbers are matching, then probably we take the formulation for the analytical method, uh, completely uh, verify the methods in terms of the uh, assay dissolution RS or in case of residual solvent which you use in the process, they do a mini validation to understand the pros and cons of the analytical method. And then we put the batches uh, in the intended pack on stability. Uh, put the batches, uh, once the stability is uh, completed, the samples are pulled out and analyzed at a different uh, conditions. And we compile the data. If the stability is uh, meeting the ICH limit or the pharmacopoeia limit, uh, then we finalize the composition. In case if it is not, then we may, we may have to uh, investigate uh, what the failure modes and the root cause for that and correct the composition or the manufacturing process or differentiate the, the packaging or composition or protect the drug product to have a stable composition. Uh, once the prototype formulation stability and the dissolution is matched, then we go on to make the process development. Process development is nothing but to identify a design space for doing the manufacturing process and the parameters for that. Uh, typical examples are direct blending and uh, compression or sometimes it goes for a high shear bed granulation followed by uh, drying, blending and lubrication followed by compression or capsule filling. In a dry granulation, we do with a slugging or a roll compaction and then sizing the granules, lube it and then either fill it in capsules or uh, compress into a tablet. So uh, these process parameters or uh, process parameter batches are done on a prototype equipment which, are, which simulates your uh, exhibit or a commercial scale equipment. This is a mini version of the machines. All the physical chemical characterizations are done over here, uh, which forms a basis of a parameter to your scale up and exhibit. Once this is done, we assess the risk of the formulation based on the design space what we have, the risk assessments are done. And uh, based on the risk assessment, we design the uh, quality by design experiments like uh, we have uh, the Minitab or other design expert softwares where when we feed the experimental data it can be a factorial design fully or a partial factorial designs and we understand that this how much uh, is sensitive the composition is and how much of the process variables are sensitive and we arrive at the center point and the design space. So once these two are identified, then we go up for the uh, scale up and exhibit batch to make uh, on the manufacturing plant at a pilot scale or at a commercial scale equipment, uh, transferring the technology from the uh, lab 
to the manufacturing stage. During this, the parameters are again checked. What we observed in the process lab is similar or it is uh, slightly need to be tweaked to make the composition behave the same way what it behaved at the prototype or the process scale batches. So once these uh, things are done, the ch challenges are done to understand how sensitive is the composition or process in the intended commercial scale equipment. And after that, the exhibit batches are done. Exhibit batches are basically the registration batches, wherein the data goes to the FDA for review, uh, which forms a basis of uh, uh, requesting the, in application that my drug product is similar in terms of uh, dissolution, uh, bioequivalence, stability, and it's scalable to the uh, exhibit stage. So these batches are again uh, put it on stability in the intended commercials uh, scale from this commercial scale equipment on the intended pack configurations like it is it can be a HTP container or it can be a blister pack or it can be a pouches. So based on the RLD configuration, the packs are finalized uh, again in turn consultation with the uh, manufacturer, the marketing people. And uh, once the six months of accelerated stability is done, we'll also have parallelly six months of room temperature stability. So this will uh, guide us like whether the product is stable, which was already verified during the prototype batch. So after the stability is ensured, the, uh, the, the stability data is compiled. Meanwhile, while the six months of stability, a bioequivalence also would be conducted uh, from between the RLD and the test batch to ensure that the uh, bioequivalence criteria of uh, area under the curve and the Cmax are comparable between 80 to 125 uh, from the test ratio of the test and reference. It meets this criteria. There is a separate uh, area of bioequivalence which uh, experts are there to guide us like how to uh, run the bioequivalence study, how to define the protocol uh, and what are the criticalities in, in the methods and what analyte to be done. So this also FDA gives a guidance on how to conduct the uh, study in a broader perspective of uh, whether a fed and fit should be done or a fasting also should be done, uh, whether we need to get uh, the analyte or the metabolite or both, uh, all these things are done. And the patient population, the study design, everything is given very clearly in the uh, FDA website for individual products and dosage forms. One can easily go through the FDA website and understand. The links for that is also given at the end of this presentation. So once we uh, do all these study, type of studies, uh, the data which is uh, generated from the pre-formulation, the data which is generated from the prototype, uh, from the process development, scale up and exhibit batch. So all these data are collated in a, a dossier. We call, that's called the ANDA application. So there are uh, majorly five sections out of which from the uh, formulation part, the uh, quality section, which is the uh, module three, becomes a very critical part in which uh, the 3 to S is a section where drug substance uh, related or the AP related informations are collated in as a whole. And the 3 to P section, which talks about the pharmaceutical development and the manufacturing process, like which is called the chemistry and manufacturing control in the section 3, is collated in a, uh, different sections. Uh, from KMS or the formulation lab, we give the data for the 3 to P3, which is uh, 3 to P3, which is the formulation development as per the Q9, uh, QBD approaches. And also we gave the analytical method validation and method transfer details. So these are collected and from the scale up and exhibit from the manufacturing side and the stability data are collated and the intended batch records, uh, which talks about how do we manufacture the commercial batches are collated. So all these informations are done. And from module five, you get all the bioequivalence data in the non-clinical sections in the module four and uh, the CKD summaries in the section one and the administrative section, which is about the brief about the company, where the registrations are done, where the testings are done and where manufacturing are done. And the APA sections are given in the administrative information in the module one. So all these things are collated in the uh, ECLD format and filed through an electronic gateway. Earlier, it used to be a paper-based filing. 
currently industries have moved on to electronic filing. So every company who is filing will have a electronic submission gateway uh, with a user ID and password. So all this information are digitally converted into a, a ECD skeleton in a PDF formats and the, the documents are uploaded into the gateway and it goes in, in, in two to three hours the filings are completed. Uh, there are Parafor certifications, uh, which which is a different topic in IP. Uh, I can take it about later. And there are fees to the ANDA. Uh, if you look at the fees uh, currently, uh, it, for the current year, it is almost like uh, $200,000 for an ANDA, which puts up around 1.5 crores of rupees. FDA looks at uh, the ANDA very critically. Currently, uh, the good of all is there, which is the generic uh, free, uh, drugs user fee act. Uh, currently, the version two is going on, where FDA commits to give you approval in one year, provided all the sections are meeting the regu regulatory requirement. So the accelerated approvals requires a fees, which is almost two hundred thousand dollars, and almost seventy thousand dollars for the APA manufacturer. So once this file is submitted. Uh, FDA starts to review and uh, start to give uh, comments. There could be, uh, the reviewer could have uh, a specific uh, queries. They, they may call up and ask, which is called an information request. Uh, there is a disciplined review letter because the ANDA, as we discussed, there are five different sections out of which three are critical. One is uh, the bioequivalent section, one is the labeling section, the other one is the CMC. So FDA may ask queries about these particular sections independently by reviewers and they can give a disciplined review letter. So there could be a query from the bioequivalent section, which comes as a DRL, which is we call as uh, simply the uh, disciplined review is called as DRL. And sometimes it, can, it may come from the manufacturing section for want of information on the stability, uh, the manufacturing process. So that comes as a disciplined review letter from a different, sec, uh, different set of team. And uh, there could be something on the labeling because the labeling has to be in line with the uh, RLD's uh, label. There can be, there can't be any differences. Uh, so there could be some queries from the labeling review. So these reviews has to be addressed immediately so that your review cycles uh, and the goal dates are not changed. Goal date is nothing but a specific date committed by FDA before which uh, they commit to give you uh, either an approval or raise and query. So the goal dates are initially ascertained by the uh, project manager and they give a commitment that you will get a response within this particular date. Provided we give the information completely without any flaw. And in case uh, there is a major flaw in the AD, uh, generally the, the department reviews are collated and it comes as a complete response letter, uh, which is uh, a major uh, set back for the timeline of the project. Generally, for responding for a CRL, FDA gives a timeline of eight months. And uh, for them to review and complete, they, they take a time of around 12 months. So one year, you will get delayed if there is a CRL. And once the CRL is reviews uh, are addressed and the review is completed, uh, either you may get a refuse to uh, approval or you may get an approval letter, based on which uh, you can start marketing provided the approvals, uh, you don't have a uh, patent blocking or a exclusivity for the molecule. There could be two scenarios, either you have to wait till the uh, patent expires so that you start marketing, or there is uh, no, if there are no patents, then you can go for a launch on approval. So these are the two different strategies. I think uh, I, I took a time till 12 o'clock. So most of the uh, things are I have covered overall from the perspective of the drug formulation manufacturing uh, through an ANDA. Uh, there are a lot of resources I have given in the uh, uh, link in the in this slide. So probably people can look at that and answer. Uh, I don't think there is a question and answer session for the current uh, webinar, but I would post uh, request uh, the people who watch uh, to, I will ask a question rather, so you can leave your comments on this particular webinar. Uh, basically, I have uh, the, the question that 
a scientist was awarded uh, by uh, John F. Kennedy in, in the late 60s, uh, who, who made a significant advancement in the uh, welfare of the human health uh, from the FDA. So I would request uh, people who are review, uh, watching this video or subsequently watching to comment uh, the, uh, by putting the name of the scientist. Uh, it, it would be a great honor for uh, for him or her to have this uh, reviewed after so long years. Uh, the takeaway message is that based on the scientist, you can review or Google uh, his or her name uh, and understand the painstaking effort uh, the scientist has took to uh, make these significant advancements in the drug research and development. And uh, I would take that as an inspirational message for this particular webinar uh, and uh, ask the students to uh, watch, uh, ask questions in case if any, uh, I'll be happy to answer in the response to these questions. And uh, last, uh, at the, as a closing note, I would uh, thank the management of the uh, Padma of the School of Pharmacy, uh, the principal dean, as well as um, the faculty members. I would not name individual, but to the entire faculty who has organized this seminar from the uh, back end uh, to make this a successful event. I, I would also urge the manage, uh, thank the management who took initiatives to run such kind of presentations in the, in the current pandemic, uh, this, considering the welfare of the students, as well as not holding the uh, students to not read or something uh, that is highly appreciable from our side. We are also open to have uh, access for students to understand from our institute. So people can contact me from the uh, uh, the mail ID from or my phone numbers to uh, answer any queries or uh, understand about the pharmaceutical development as a generic product developments. Uh, over to the management. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The session is open for queries, so question and answers. Dear delegates, if there is any queries, please post your uh, queries in the uh, chat box. Sir, as, uh, as it now, no queries, sir. Sir, one small question from my side, sir, uh, Shanmugam, sir. Sir, can, please, you please enlighten, can you please enlighten the role of uh, QBD, sir, in this process? Uh, the quality by design approach is uh, laid by FDA for uh, the drug product development. Uh, in late in 2014, uh, before which it was a conventional approach. Uh, FDA does not want to the, have a conventional approach, but it does not mean that we have to always follow the conventional approach. There are even other methods of doing the drug product development. Basically, the, uh, the conventional approach had only one composition and doesn't have uh, the interaction studied between factors or the composition. Now, in the quality by design, we have a factorial design to understand the impact of one factor of the CPN uh, on the other. If we can do that experiment, generally uh, only one factorials are taken, one factor is taken. If you say, example, uh, if you may check the effect of magnesium stearate at one level, keeping the other things common, you will run only at one percentage magnesium stearate 0.5 and the two percentage there are three experiments done if you run such kind of experiment the number of experiments will be very high 
and you the cost of the development program will be very high so uh, in the quality by design approach you are running a factorial design uh, wherein it will take up the extremes of formulations uh, there is a software to run that so you feed the uh, center point or the center composition and allow it to run with two factorial or three factorial or full factorial design so it will take up excipients uh, levels and understand between the interaction between two excipient or between the ap and the excipient and it will set a give a set of uh, experiments you, if you run that experiments you will get a p value which should be less uh, less than 0 0.05 which is 95% significance of the factors are attained so this is with respect to the composition similarly you can also run for the manufacturing process uh, in in detail if you want to look at a model of this it is already present in the uh, fda site for an immediate release tablet how the uh, qbd approach has to be run and for a modified release also it is given so one can get through that on a specific query on the QBD, if you wish, you can write back to me. I'll explain in detail. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, then no queries, sir. Uh, we don't have any queries for the session. Great. Great. Yes. Thank Basically, you get posting from the uh, webinar of after this. Uh, also, we I'm happy to address the queries. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Once if we get the queries, we'll definitely get. We'll uh, bring to your notice, sir, and we'll get the things clarified. Thank you very much. Now I request Shenmugam sir to kindly address the, the session. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, you, thank you, sir. Your wonderful, wonderful speech, wonderful delivery of the uh, the scientific talk, sir. We are really uh, grateful for you, and we, on behalf of the management of Sri Padmanabha School of Pharmacy and the principal, we really thank you, sir, for your kind uh, response towards the uh, the webinar talk, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir, shall we? Shenmugam, sir. Yes, uh, sir. I request you uh, to kindly present the uh, uh, appreciation certificate if you have, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Kumar, sir. Yes, sir. I think a copy of this would be sent as an email. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely will mail the certificate to you, sir. Great, great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation and sparing your valuable time with us, sir. We are very much privileged. And sorry, in the beginning, we couldn't start at the time because uh, adjacently we were running with the BFARM final year project groups of almost eight batches, sir. Okay. Thank you for sharing with us, sir. Sir, we'll uh, end this touch. Yes, yeah, sir. it's highly appreciated, and uh, I wish all the team a such grand success for the, yes, the coming years. Yes, sir. Our HOD Shanmugam, sir, was very much uh, worried about to start this session as early as possible, as you were very early and you were, uh, we were, you know, sir was thinking that not to make Kumar Shanmugam, sir, delay for the session like that, sir. So thank it's you, okay. sir, uh, for being part of it. Sir, we'll thank you, sir. With, uh, Kumar, sir. Uh, yeah. And we will be in touch with you, sir, regularly. Yes. And we'll come to you if the uh, COVID problem ends. We'll come to your uh, industry, sir, to visit you. You are most welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, thank let us end this uh, today's session with uh, National Anthem. Please. Yes. Janagana Mana Adhinayaka Jayahe Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Putkala Vanga Vindya Himachal Yamuna Ganga Uchchal Jaladhi Taranga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Aashish Maage Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Janagan Mangal Dayak Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He, Jaya He, 
जय हे जय 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 हे thank you very much sir so shall we end the session sir thank you sir thank you very much yes sir we'll be in touch with you sir thank you sir yes sir bye uh, thanks yes, thank you uh, shanmugam sir hod sir and yes. i thank all the principal sir and uh, management that's it for today's program sir thank you